Hey, what's up guys? It's Russian Magic here with a another magic effect tutorial. This effect is one that I did a few months ago or a month ago or something like that. And it's the do people really use 10% of their brains? And uh, I got a few people asking if I could do this uh, teach a tutorial and I said I would. So here is me not being a liar. So uh, if you would ever be so kind to check out the performance before I teach it to you guys so you have an idea of the trick and you're not lost throughout the tutorial, go ahead and click right here on top of this de deck and um, come back after you watch the tutorial. Alright, so uh, I'm assuming you guys watched the tutorial for this trick uh, and so let's get started. Um, I'm not going to teach you guys the exact uh, routine, uh, the, the the exact way I did it in, in the uh, performance, and that's because uh, there's something in there that's not my original effect, and it's uh, called Sneak Peek by Spidey. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. You can pick it up at 3.11. It's only six dollars, and uh, it can be used for hundreds of things. But I'm going to teach you an alternative way that personally I like better. It's a lot quicker than the way I did it. And I honestly wish I would have done it uh, the way I'm going to teach you instead of the way I did. So for the way I'm going to teach you guys is you're going to need two decks of cards. They could be any two decks. It doesn't matter. Uh, but optional, uh, one of the decks needs to have a one-way back design. And what that means is that... Uh, that the deck is how the back design how it's designed is that if you turn it this way you can uh, basically tell the difference from which way it's turned because of how it's designed or you can it's called an animated deck and if what that means is see how it moves around when I flick through it and I'll elaborate on that more later on all right so at the beginning of the trick you want to have the spectator shuffle it up as much as they want uh, it doesn't matter how much they shuffle it up. And then you want them to have them um, pick a card. Free choice. really is. And while they're doing this, you want to make sure that the second spectator does not see this card. In this case, it's the six of hearts. Only the first spectator should see this card. In fact, if you have other people around, only let the first spectator see this card. Just so it's even more magical because it's only them who knows. Alright. And also... Make sure you're not doing this to somebody that, that would lie later on, you know, just in case if you're performing for a heckler or something like that that wants to run your trick. Alright, so then you ask them to return it back, and they will. And what you want to do from here is privately show the first spectator again, the six of hearts, and just say, remember your card. And while you do that, is you're going to perform a move that I created, and uh, I don't really have a name for it. It's just a, basically it's just a peek, and I have a tutorial on it. It's in the description, and you can click right here if you want a better tutorial. But basically, what you're doing is you're bending the card that they picked with your thumb real quick, and then what you're gonna do is square up the deck. At this point, you still don't know the the card is, and just tell them that you're gonna get rid of this deck of cards, so there's no way that that you or that I could find your card and while you're putting it back into the box you're gonna get a peek at the six of hearts and it's a really easy thing to do and uh, and it's a really efficient way efficient way to get a peek at their card so right now you know that they picked the six of hearts but how do you get that to the knowledge of the other spectator and uh, so what you're gonna do here is get out your other deck of cards uh, this deck could also be sh shuffled beforehand it doesn't actually don't shuffle it beforehand just get it out and what you're gonna do is basically go through the pattern of that subconsciously the other person their friend it knows what card that uh, they're the first spectator is thinking of and so just say you're gonna run through the cards real quick and I just tell the other person to absorb all this information of the cards in Tell them not to think of a card, just to absorb it all in. And so they'll do so. But it's, this part is really important because what you're really doing is you're looking for the Six of Hearts as you spread through. So bam, found the Six of Hearts. And what you're going to do from here is, this is over-exaggerated, but what you want to do is push up on the Queen of Clubs 
in your case will be a different card. Just the card before the six of hearts. Push up on it and get a finger break. Just like that above the six of hearts. And while you're doing this, you might not want to uh, be in the eye view of the first spectator. Maybe like have the back turned or something like that. Or just make sure that they don't see or something like that. Be so they... Uh, because they might pick up on you trying to keep track of the six of hearts. So I'll do that in real time just so you see, know what it uh, looks like. So you're scanning through, bam, six of hearts, keeping track, keeping track as you just skim through the rest real quick. What you're going to do from here is transfer that finger break into a pinky break. And what, what that is is just a break with your pinky. So looking for the six of hearts found it finger break going through the rest and then you're just gonna push the rest of the cards in and as you do you're gonna grab that packet of cards that's above your finger and put your pinky in the place and then square up the rest of the deck really casually and from here you can do many things you could just do a pass any pass you want to get the six of hearts on top or you can just simply uh, do a double undercut casually while you're talking to the spectator w w about uh, what you're about to do and just control it to the top of the deck. It's really easy to do. You're just locating that six of hearts and controlling it to the top. So what you're going to do here is you're going to do you're going to force the six of hearts onto the second spectator and you can do this any way you want. You could force it any way you want, but you're basically going to have them pick five cards. Okay, but you, you the first one you'll have to force. And in the video, I just did a simple riffle force because I really didn't want to mess up or something. And what a riffle force is, you're just cutting the deck and getting pinky break, and you're riffling down until they say stop. Let's say they say stop here. Of course, it's not at the six of hearts, but what you do is just pretend you're taking it where you're take, taking it off where they say stop but really you're taking it off at the break and bam the six of hearts or you could easily uh, just do a classic force I mean you have five chances for them to pick that card so it's really easy I'm just gonna take five other random cards the other four don't matter the, the other four cards don't matter as long as the six of hearts is among the other four so this is where the one-way back design comes into play. Okay, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to fan out these five cards for the second spectator. Don't show them to the first one because you don't want them to spot their six of hearts and give it away. So um, you're going to go through each card and just tell the second spectator to kind of remember it. And this is really important too because what you're really doing, like I'm going to take the six of hearts and I'm going to put it down. And if you notice on the back of the cards, these two little squares right here. And if I turn this way around, you'll notice that that these two little squares on this side of the the deck are the same right now. But if I turn it around, now these two little squares are lower. That's what I mean by a one-way back design. So if I were to put the six of hearts with the two squares higher and then the rest with them lower, I'll, I would be I'd really easily be able to tell from just looking at the backs um, which one's the six of hearts. So I could have collect them all up and have, have them mixed up by myself and then even have them mixed up by the spectator. As long as when they mix them up, they don't mix them up like all messy just have tell them to mix them up exactly how you're mixing them up and I'll make it even look more crazy because you have no idea which one's which and they have no idea which one's which but by looking at the back I can know that this one is the six of hearts and that's done because of the one way back design and uh, there's lots of decks out there this is the bicycle guardian deck that has a one way back design uh, this uh, this Phoenix deck 
also has a one-way back design. Uh, this is a very nice deck of cards. It's the Phoenix playing cards. And um, if you are in a position where you can only get bicycle cards or if you live in a different country like I do and the only cards you can get are these crappy cards with uh, like I don't even know like they just suck made out of paper uh, you could easily put a mark on the just a tiny pen mark on the corner of each of the cards so you can keep track of them or if you don't want to do that or you're using a borrow deck for this just mix it up keep track don't let the spectator mix it up and just keep track of the six of hearts like I'm doing now and bam six of hearts alright so it's really on your call on what you want to do uh, that's just how I like to do it alright so what you're going to do from here is call something called the magician's force it's a really nice piece of magic uh, if you do it wrong, you'll look dumb, and they'll know what you're trying to do. But if you do it right, you'll fool them, and they won't have any idea that you fooled them. So what I like to do is stick the six of hearts right in the middle. And that just I just like to do that because of typically people will pick the middle card first. I don't know why, it's just the way people are. This is how it's been for me. So you're going to ask the spectator if they're right-handed or left-handed. It doesn't matter what they say, right or left, doesn't matter. Just whatever hand they say, say point to any card with that hand first. The reason why you say that is just in case if they don't point to the three six of hearts, right off the bat, let's say they point to here, then you can say, all right, with your left hand, point to another card. And then they might point to that card, this card, that six of hearts, whatever. And this is, this is how you do Magician's Force. If they point to the six of hearts right off the bat, just say, are you sure? Don't say... Don't say like, okay, you pick this one, we'll get rid of, first say, are you sure? And if they say yes, then say, okay, we'll get rid of all the other ones. Sorry, that's my phone. Uh, if they say no, I want to switch. Say, okay, go ahead and switch. So they'll switch and then say, all right, point to another one. And they'll point to another one. And what you do from here is just say, all right, we'll get rid of these two and keep these three. Always keep the six of hearts in play. So, again... Let's say they point to this card and that card. You push them up and say, all right, we'll get rid of both of them. And you get rid of them because none of them are six of hearts. Let's say then they point to this one and that one. That's great. That's the best case scenario. Then you say, okay, we'll get rid of that and we're left with the six of hearts. That's what you're hoping to happen. But most likely right here what will happen is they'll pick this, the six of hearts. They'll either pick this one first and then the six of hearts. And if you do that, then up jog them both take that one out and they just say alright pick one they take that one they'll say alright we'll get rid of that one if they take this one say alright get rid of that card and we'll use this one and it'll be the six of hearts so if they like you just have to act like everything that they point to is the, what you meant for it to happen like like you if they point to something you didn't expect them to be like oh my gosh just whatever they point to make sure you get the six of, I'm sure that a lot of you are familiar with what a Magician's Force is, and there's some awesome tutorials out there if this wasn't good enough for you guys. But you just narrow it down to the six of hearts. And from here, you don't want to be like, bam, look, six of hearts, is that, is that what you're thinking of? What you do here is build up, build up the moment. So what you want to do is just, they point to, you're left off with this card, and just say, just recap with them. Just say, you, you picked out a card, any card you wanted to. You randomly picked this card out. And then let the second spectator look at it. And while they're looking at it, tell the first spectator, what was the card that you were thinking of this whole time? And they'll most likely, I mean, if they're not being a jerk, they'll say six of hearts. And then that's when you reveal it, and everyone should go crazy, hopefully. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, that tutorial. Um, I hope you guys are liking these uh, mentalism effects. Because uh, there's not a lot of mentalism on YouTube. I mean, there are, there are some, but there aren't a lot. And I'm going to start teaching a whole bunch of mentalism. I have a lot of things lined up for you guys. So I hope you guys are ready. Because uh, I'm not going anywhere. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please like this video if you did. Comment below uh, if you have any tips for me on how my teaching style could be better. I know I'm not the greatest teacher, but uh, I'd like to think I'm pretty good. But uh, just have a nice day. Uh, oh, don't forget to su subscribe if you haven't already for some awesome videos. And uh, enter into my contest I'm holding right now. It ends uh, October, 20, or October 19th. Uh, you can win awesome tricks from illusionists, uh, from Theory 11, you know, what have you. I have a lot of things that I know of. And uh, the more subscribers I get, the more I'll be giving away. So just uh, be looking out for that. And uh, have a nice day. I'll see you guys next time.